So tell me, Dojo, how how did it affect your life? How did it change your life? Oh, man. I mean, I've been in and out of it over probably the last 10 or 11 years. So I really started my senior year of high school. Um, I got involved. Like I, I fell victim to some guy really like peddling stuff and he was teaching stuff out of a book. And then I got involved with like a real master and a, and a guy that was teaching really great stuff. But what do you train in? Like, what do you do? So I do a little bit of um, jujitsu, um, you know, the, st- the place that I go to in New York is a Gracie Jiu Jitsu uh, affiliate. So they teach, you know, it is top tier. It is, you know, the Jiu Jitsu is rolling, only- right? Yeah, it's and it's either gi or no gi. Um, what's really surprising about that is, especially if you talk to like law enforcement officers and guys that are in the field, a lot of guys think that the right way to go is, well, I'm just going to do no gi and get shorts and a t-shirt because that's how most people like I'm going to get into um, I'm, am I going to get into a fight or if I'm mm-hmm. going to crap with somebody. But the things that you learn with a gi are you learn how to grab stuff. You learn how to grab clothes. You learn how to I mean, you could choke somebody out using their T-shirt mm-hmm. if, you, if you know the right place to do it and know the right leverage points. So and most um, guys can't do that. Like in your estimation, what percentage of the male population do you think could if if the need should be called upon them to be lethal? actually defend themselves and somebody that they might be with less than 10 i'd say between five and seven if not less fucking it's small right so just so guys like the sport is now and how popular i mean there's right two gyms all over the place and still i mean guys like you know when i talk about learning combat sports and pick something boxing krav maga jujitsu i i don't care karate like whatever it is that you like pick something and just go do it because as he just stated and i'd estimate it's probably about the same probably about 90 percent of the population doesn't know how to fight okay yeah, you got no idea what they're doing they'll talk about it but they don't know how to actually fight and be lethal and guess what you have an air of confidence around you when you know you can fuck somebody up right okay you may not win but at least you're gonna like go down fighting right yeah 100 percent. i mean it's just even even when I see guys coming into the gym for the first time, you know, I've been going to the same place since I've been in New York about six years. And so I'm I'm a guy that they put me with a lot of the new guys and, you know, I'm a pretty good, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good pad holder. Dojos? What's that? Are there any losers in dojos? There are some. But what happens to them over time? They get carved out of wood, man. If they put in the work, if they stick around. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, too, like, it's it's humbling. That's the biggest thing. It's super. That's my point. You know, There's no losers yeah. in dojos on right. a long term basis. They either leave and they quit, or they do the work and they level up. It's impossible for you to surround yourself with low tier, low value men because right. by because by definition, if you're moving your ass from your house to a dojo to learn how to be an effective combat striker, guess what? Other guys are motivated too, and then you just kind of like level yourselves up, right? And it's a great environment for guys. You know, awesome. no one's there to laugh at you. No one is there to judge. There's no, there's, you know, even places where a guy like Fitch would go and train. Mm-hmm. I mean, those guys are legit looking out for each other because it's, you know, it, it's, I never understood guys that would, even at the gyms, like you're making fun of the guy who's in there and he's overweight. Like he's in the fucking game, man. Yeah, like he's, he's at least yeah. there putting in the work. So the guy deserves a pat on the back. Um, you know, so, but but yeah, so the vet, I've always had positive experiences, even with high level guys. And it's one of those things too, especially jujitsu, where you can go really hard, um, but the in the injury chance is super, super low mm-hmm. because it's just, you know, it's called the gentle art for a reason. I mean, I think every guy, I was talking to Chad about this, Chad, oh, I'm not gonna say his name, but he's mm-hmm. a he's a guy in the community and but um super high level in like three different disciplines. I think he has like three or four different black belts. I mean, the guy's mm-hmm. a, is a stone cold killer and it's, you, you gotta do, you gotta learn some sort of stand up. You gotta learn some sort of ground. You gotta, you, you, you just gotta do You gotta it. learn striking too. Like you gotta learn you how have to, to learn throw. striking because man, if you don't what know. What do you use for striking, kickboxing, punch, boxing? What do you use? I do a little bit of, mostly mine's like Dutch style kickboxing. So I do boxing, man. I love fucking throwing punches. Yeah. It's a combination with a little bit of both. We do a lot pads. of partner drills. So we do like Crazy. You know, focus mitts and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's always a lot of fun. And then we put shin pads on and kind of go nuts and do a little bit of sparring for for the higher level guys. But yeah. what it also does is it it really helps you hone in on learning your body and how it moves and how to control yourself. And you know, 
you can really you can really pick out the beginners from the guys that know what they're doing. Guys are like super like really gripping tight and they're like just really stone and guys don't know how to throw a punch and they're like angling their wrists like this. I mean, it's super, super easy to see who knows what they're doing, who they're not. Um, and the confidence thing is huge. Mm -hmm. And you can always tell the most part. I always, I always say this. I think it's such a funny thing about Fitch because, you know, he's one of the most soft-spoken guys on the entire Rule Zero, Rule Zero panel, if not yeah. the most. And he's a guy that could literally kill a man with his bare hands in under 10 seconds. Probably, yeah. Right, because – but it's, you know, when you see these guys in the street, oh, like, what the fuck, man? Like, let's go, let's go. Let's, you know, what's up? Like, those are the guys that don't want to fight. It's the guys uh, Yeah, I mean, like, well, I mean, when you see the guys with the cauliflower ears, you know that you got somebody that's that's <laughs> at least taken beatings and probably, you know – Go the other way. Too. If you see that, yeah. like, turn the <laughs> other way. All right, so, so that's combat sports. Um, I'm going to hop on to the last – three or four I got left over, but I'll see you later. Okay, bro. Yeah, man. You got it. All right. Thanks for hopping on, man. Of course. See ya. And um, if you guys don't know, Moff has a show that he does on the stereo app. Just, just search for Moff M O F F. I've, I've hopped in once before. Um, I think lately he's, he's been breaking down some of the chapters in my book.